crushed in taxes on a three million dollar IRA. Got a number of you guys that sent me this video some dude put out on the. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I'm not gonna share the link to you or anything because we're gonna go into the uh, the problem this guy has. All right, crushed in tax on a three million dollar IRA. The uh, the premise was these guys are deferring 24% tax uh, in which to pay basically 13% effective tax rate in the future. That makes sense to me. <laughs> but then he said their Social Security was 40000 <laughs> bucks. There's a 24% effective tax, uh, uh, marginal tax bracket. Their Social Security is only 40000 bucks. <laughs> that's $3,300 between the husband and wife. <laughs> like, come on, man. Oh, my goodness. So that's silly. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. I just, uh, you, you know, <laughs> they got $3 billion of deferrals. And they're only getting 40000 between a husband and wife and Social Security. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Part two, he never talked about Irma. All right, so they have $150,000 of uh, distributions. Uh, they got Social Security at $40,000. Then they got some other types of income as well. The married filing joint at seventy five. Never talks about Irma. And uh, Irma, of course, the income with respect to Medicare Adjustment Act from what, 2005 or something like that, I can't remember, Bush signed that. And uh, so you got more uh, Medicare premiums to stay to pay as well. Uh, now, right there, about 200,000 bucks will probably be okay, but as RMDs kick in, the Irma's gonna be more and more and more. And I hate to say it, but, oh, a plane going overhead. Put some chem dries in the sky, some chem dries, some chem uh, trails in the sky, aren't ya? Um, if you think Irma is gonna, is gonna be where it's at for the future, I got issues for you, man. Um, they're not going to raise income tax, but certainly they're going to make Medicare more expensive for wealthier people. That's, I mean, dude, Medicare is dead in the, on the line right now. It's already dead to right. Social Security is freaking Fort Knox compared to Medicare. So uh, Irma is not a laughing matter. It's definitely something we should not be avoiding uh, if you got $3 million IRA. That's, hey. All right, then part three, of course, you can talk about you know the difference between married, filing, joint, and a single taxpayer. All right, so in of itself, yes, if my wife and I both died at the same time, uh, you know, you're, you're not like no one's saying you're going to get crushed by taxes. Whoever said you're going to lose 30% to IRS is stupid. I've talked about this probably one of my first videos I ever did. Uh, my man, Wes Moss here, who I like, I don't listen to him or anything, but I mean, he had, he was on a, did a video on your basic effective tax rate of 30% on somebody with $30,000, $80,000 a year in income. So that's just not even close to it. Um, no one's sitting there thinking you're going to lose 30% of your IRA to the IRS. No one thinks that. But be it as it may, um, in this case, you know, there's still a 15% effective tax rate. Effective tax rate is different than your marginal tax bracket, by the way, just as an FYI. I'm not going to get in that here, but your marginal tax bracket is going to be higher than your effective tax bracket. That's just a fact. But no one's sitting there thinking with any legitimacy that you're going to lose 30% of your IRA to the IRS. That's, that's just straight up silly. All right, so part, part four of this, we didn't even talk about anything that you're leaving to your kids as well. So how much you leave it to your children? Uh, they're all going to have to pay taxes, and when you die, this couple was 75 years old, which means their children are probably 40 to 50 years old in their peak earning careers. Thus, they're leaving all this money taxable to the children. Uh, never mind, again, the, the single taxpayer, the widow's tax trap I talk about. Uh, never mind the Irma stuff. Never mind he only had $40,000 of Social Security. Uh, the whole the, the argument in of itself, if we just look at one aspect of tax planning, it's fine. I got no qualm with that. Um, third, I don't know, fifth, sixth lease, something like that. Dudes, I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this a long time. The one thing that sucks is when you're down and out, down in the dumps, and you're planning in your retirement, you're in retirement, you're down in the dumps, the markets are down, you still have to take the RMD out. It doesn't matter how much uh, income you need, you still have to take that RMD out. And let's say, I mean, it doesn't matter how much the markets are up or down, you still have to take a certain amount out because it's based on 31 December of the previous year. So let's just say now we're in, a, I don't know, we're freaking in 2007, the end of 2007. Now it's in 2008, all right? The markets are now, it's this, December 2008. Our RMDs are based on the account value at the end of 2007. <laughs> what happened in 2008? The markets went kaplunk, kaplunk, kaplunk. 
you got to take the money out as if it were 2007, even though it's not. It's 2008 now. Ugh. So now what happens? Not only do you have to spend the money, but let's just say you needed to. I can tell you, I've had clients like this. It, it, it kills me inside. They needed money to live on. I said, you're going to have to take $80,000 of your IRA to live on. They're like, all right. But that comes with a $20,000 tax. I'm just throwing that out there. It's something like that. I remember this lady, Shirley, in New Jersey. $20,000. She only had I don't know, $800,000, $600,000 left. So every $20,000 of RMDs, that wasn't in the state of New Jersey either. Because she's a, she was a single taxpayer. She needed something like $80,000 to live on because she had high property taxes. She still had a mortgage, and she lived in New Jersey. And it's not cheap to live in New Jersey. So she needed $80,000 from her IRA. All right? You can argue, well, that's too much or whatever. It was. It is what it was. Because she had debt to pay, property tax to pay, condo fees to pay, and she lived in Chatham, New Jersey. Or was it? No, Morristown, New Jersey. One of those places up there. Not a cheap place to live, all right? In a condo. So now she's got to take $80,000 out. That's what she needs to net. The gross is one hundred, dollars if not more, because stupid Governor Christie and the state of, and stupid Governor Murphy, you clowns up there in New Jersey, tax the bejesus. It used to tax the bejesus out of people. They don't so much anymore now, thankfully. There's, if, uh, New Jersey's a lot more favorable if your income is below 100000 bucks or something like that. I can't remember. But, so now she's got to take one hundred dollars out of a seven, dollars $800,000 portfolio. So now she's taking essentially 10%, if not more, from her portfolio to solve the taxes. And she's too old to go back to work, man. This is the issue people don't understand. You pay the taxes while you got the money to pay them, while you can afford to keep working. Like me, I j I'm now I'm writing a check today to the IRS for the last of everything on my Roth conversions. And it sucks donkey balls, dude. I hate it. I'm like, ugh. I saved all this money, had in cash, because I like having cash, and it's all gone now. It's going to be all gone once I send a hick, submit button on my turbo tax. It sucks. But guess what? I'll never have taxes to pay ever again in terms of that. You know, maybe I'll have some income tax, but in terms of my IRA distributions, it's all now in Roth. I'm 53 years old. My wife is 49 years old. There will not be any widows to extra have for my wife or me, assuming one of us survives, which is a pretty safe assumption. There won't be any money that my kids have to pay tax on, assuming that the tax code allows the Roth to be you know, uh, sent to your kids without, without taxes. Uh, again, that would be a state tax issue, not an income tax issue. All right, so we're... We, so right now, there is no widow's tax trap, there is no tax to my kids, there's no Irma to consider, Social Security is now tax-free, as long as I don't have earned income, and I don't have to have earned income. I can say, oh, I can live off my portfolio and Social Security tax-free. If I want earned income, that's on me, but not on the IRS, it's on me. Ugh, I can't believe people don't get this. So for me, I got, look at that big old bird poop right there. What's up with that, man? I just wiped my hand in it. That wasn't very smart, was it? Oh, boy, Josh. You're such a caveman. I'm just a caveman. I don't get your tax codes. Anyway, so for me, not only do we not have to wor worry about Irma, not only do we not have to worry about uh, Will's tax trap, not only do I not have to worry about my kids, not only do I not have to worry about Social Security taxation, I also don't have to worry about coming up with money to pay the taxes when things are going south if they do that for me. I'm telling you, man, when you have to have money and it comes from an IRA, guess what? You're going to have to have more money because you've got to pay Uncle Sam. Any tax guy that overlooks the effects of Social Security, Irma, the, the spousal, the widow's tax trap, and then to the kids, I just, what are you doing, man? That makes me mad. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. You have to look at the whole thing. You can't just look at this tiny little slither and say you're good to go because your effective tax rate is 18% or whatever the hell it was, whereas before your, effective, your marginal tax rate is 24. You got a deduction on 24, now you only have to pay 15. There's more to the story. Oh, it drives me up the wall. It drives me up the wall. I just, anyway, all right, I just, a couple of you guys asked me to watch that video. I typically don't watch other people's financial videos because it gets me riled up. And I don't like to bash people. I, I don't, but uh, I'm not bashing this dude. I just, it's like, he was a little bit cocky, frankly. And I don't like that when you're cocky if, you, if you're not dealing with a full deck. And I don't mean he's stupid. I'm just mean, don't be cocky if you're missing part of the, the scenario. That's for sure. Nice. Love your thoughts, Scott.